Before we start this program, we present this important message from the Media, Entertainment and Arts Alliance. Many freelance artists, performers and screen crew are ineligible for the government's new JobKeeper wage subsidy. It's important the government understand that no worker should be left behind. I'm an actor. I'm a film and TV editor. Location manager. Stage manager. An actor. A production designer. Performing artist. A key group. Musical theatre actor. A unit assistant. A production manager. Sound engineer and production manager. A costume designer. We are by addresses. An art director. A set dresser. Lighting technician. A cinematographer. A tour guide at the Sydney Opera House. Stunt coordinator. Wardrobe stylist. An acting teacher. Actor. Production manager. Location manager. Camera operator, steady camera operator. The unit manager. Actress. Costume standby. Special effects supervisor. An audio visual technician. Dancer and choreographer. An assistant director. A video editor. A theatre technician. Prop builder. A musical theatre performer. A special effects technician. An arts department. An actor. A camera assistant. An AV technician. An actor. Camera assistant. An actor. And I am a stage manager, or at least I used to be before COVID 19 took away the entire arts industry. In the past couple of weeks, because of COVID 19, I've lost tens of thousands of dollars. Thirty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand dollars. Me over twenty thousand dollars. Over twenty thousand dollars. So fifty thousand dollars. A thirty-five thousand dollar contract. Over twenty thousand dollars. I lost all my shifts at work, as well as all of my freelance work for the rest of the year. All of my gigs for the foreseeable future. That has left me with no income. Leaving me unable to pay my rent and bills for the next six months. And I don't know how I'm going to pay rent this year. Yesterday, I had to call the bank and tell them I can't pay my mortgage. The arts industry has taken a massive hit and not everyone under your new scheme is covered. Um, I'm not eligible for any of the job or wage subsidies that are going around at the moment. I am one of 20,000 plus screen workers in Australia that will potentially fall through the cracks with the new JobKeeper subsidy. And it means that tens of thousands of workers in TV, film and theatre, arts and other media will miss out on the payments. BCAR stats show that cultural and creative activity contributed $111.7 billion to the Australian economy, far more than Qantas, and yet we have still to be acknowledged by the government and we are slipping through the cracks in your income subsidies. Uh, please include us in your safety net and uh, readdress the gaps that have been left because we've fallen through the cracks once again. Please include freelancers in these programs. We need an income subsidy too. No worker left behind. Wage subsidy for all. This program is for mature audiences only. Ooh, naughty. The makers of this program would like to begin by acknowledging and thanking the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of this land we are upon. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Hey, Minnie! What? We're ready on stage! I'm just shaving my tits! Roll the bloody titles! Hello and welcome, you glorious things, to Live from Stonewall, starring the fabulous Minnie Cooper! Uh, I'm Steve Milne and I'll be your host for the next hour of non-stop entertainment. We kicked off last week's series with a bang. So much so, we apparently broke the internet. So if you're watching now, congratulations. You've solved the mystery every Australian since the dawn of NBN has tried to solve before you. You've got your Wi-Fi working. Oh my gosh. Okay, we have an exciting lineup of guest superstars coming on your screens tonight. Take a look at this. We'll be chatting with Aussie pop icon Melissa Katz. Comedy goddess Nikki Osborne will be joining us live from the bush. Let's hope she's not drunk for our Skype chat. It's Greta Lee Jackson. Minnie will be finding out exactly what award-winning actress Lara Mulcahy can't live without. Sherilyn Barnes reveals how she became a gay icon. Our favourite entertainment reporter Richard Reed will be dishing some celebrity gossip. I'll be revealing Queer Screen's top films of the week. Plus, we'll be chatting mental health with Chris James from GaySydneyCouncillor.org. What a lineup! Could this show fit in anything more? Oh, yes, it can. A sexy barman in the form of Ivan. Hi, Ivan. Oh, and guests. Hello, guys. Oh, I love them. Okay, keeping the tunes going tonight is our incredible in house DJ. It is Dom D'Souza. Hey, Dom. There he is. Oh, he's lovely. Okay, and our socially distant production crew and guests will be kept safe and sanitized thanks to Pandemic, the mask cleaner. All good there, Pam? 
this place has never been cleaned. This is great. Okay. Now, without further ado, here she is. It is the queen of the night. It's Minnie's big opening. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tora Hyman. She is like my idol. She is like the Meryl Streep of Australian drag, but even better, I finally got to meet my idol, Tora, and this is what she said to me. How can somebody spend so much money on the canvas to fuck up the painting? <laughs> You're never gonna be a drag queen, never. Oh. Maybe Tora's right. Maybe drag just isn't for me. I just don't understand why she thinks my makeup is really that bad. <sighs> I gaze at my drag, every look is complete. Why does she think I shouldn't compete? Why can't she see I'm a queen who is just sickening? Look at her though. Pretty, I'm told. Personally, I think she looks tired and old. Then I sit down and think, Divas, she's won everything. She does bingos and funerals and weddings. She's got small tits and big tits galore. She gets all the jobs. I don't get it. I don't care. She's a big deal. I want it more. I want to be the biggest drag star. I want to be, want to be my lit sick again. Strutting around on those, what's that word again? Oh, heels. RuPaul's Drag Race will only get you so far All that's required is Vogue and Death dropping And winning the crowd over with What's that word again? Reveals Up goes my wig Up goes my tuck Up go the wages and up What the fuck? Still a low fee But I still want to be Part of her world what would I give if I could leave as Tora's drag daughter? What would I pay to spend a day to be opulent? I'll finger her grand, prostrate gland, small price to pay to be her drag daughter. Like most hairy women, she'll get me trimming all her back hair. drag queens know. I'll ask them some questions and they'll give me some answers. Super glue on lashes and why does it the fuck burn? When's it my turn? Drag I just love. Love to be able to be a part of. Better makeup maybe. And Tora might let me hmm, be part of her world. Very much doubt it, though. Hello, everybody. Let's cheer things up. My name is Minnie Cooper. Give it up for me. Yay! Hello, Australia. Hello, world. And hello, everyone in lockdown. If this is the first time you tuned in tonight, I am not Rhonda Birchmore. As I told you, I'm Minnie Cooper, and that's all you need to know, and that I'm bloody fabulous. Yay! First things first, I need to get some good lighting. Excuse me. <laughs> oh. That's better. First, I have to say thank you to Tim and Rod who won the amazing race for their incredible workout video last week. If you've not checked them out, I suggest you do. I have been watching their videos all week long and I've got all these calluses on my right hand. So I had to move to my left. And the good thing about that is that 
I don't feel like I'm living on my own anymore. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Best thing. Everyone, try it. You'll love it. <laughs> Even my mother's tried it. <laughs> and speaking of hot gays, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the Tiger King on the Netflix because that's what my mum calls it, the Netflix. If you've not seen this show, you've been living under a rock or not self-isolating. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Oh, that's a little creepy, isn't it? But not as creepy as Joe Exotic. He is like one of the most famous gays in the world right now. You know what? I have not been this drawn to a man in a mullet since the early 90s, since Jason Donovan in Neighbours. High school crush. <laughs> you know what? Joe has many talents. He's a zookeeper. He's a singer. Even a convicted felon. But not only that, he ran for governor. Yes, governor. And he got 15% of the vote. Can we just take a second and think about that? Thank you, America! <laughs> I think Joe is even more famous than George Michael when he got caught wanking off a copper in the public toilets. <laughs> All I have to say, if George did this in the pandemic, he could have just said, I'm looking for toilet paper. And then he definitely would have gotten off. Yeah! I don't know if you know this, but, you know, Joe, he is suing the government for $94 million. Yes, $94 million. Don't know what for. And not only that, Donald Trump, he wants to give him a pardon. Fuck knows. Next thing we'll know, we'll have... Kim Kardashian out the front with Kanye and Kanye holding the sign. Beyonce, video of the year, video of the year. Thank you, concert. Oh, th sorry, thank you, Kanye. What's his name again? Kanye. It wasn't good 10 years ago and it's not good now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I've got to move on. That lighting, is that better lighting, everyone? Do I look good? Do I look good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone home, do I look good? Yeah. Not only did Joe have one boyfriend, he had one husband. No, two husbands. No, three husbands. You know what, Joe? I've got an angry pussy under here with teeth. Maybe I can be your husband too. Actually, no. But ladies and gentlemen, speaking of looking for husbands, he's looking for one every minute of the day. Give it up for Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, you're always back on and backing up. I... Last week, Hans said that I wasn't dressed right. Well, look at you tonight. I'm very underdressed. You look like Glinda the Good Witch, but you're not good. Well, I don't know. If when you, you know, when you're good, you're even naughtier. And do you like naughty things? Uh, well, yes, of course. Are you naughty or nice? Well, what do you think? Oh, well, let's not comment about that we'll now. Soon find moving out. along, moving anyway, along. Anyway, you might not be able to get your husband many, but you can get your hands on some much needed donations. That's because our lovely viewers, that's you, have already donated by watching the production tonight. Simply watching means we can keep this going, keep our community connected, but most importantly, give 10% of all donations to this week's chosen charity, 2010.org.au. So if you're watching now, text your mates and tell them to watch online, donate, and get involved. Okay, I'm very excited because she's one of the stars from Skitbox, a regular presenter on Tonightly with Tom Ballard, always popping up on SBS's The Feed, and most recently appeared in Drunk History. Take a look at this. It's Malcolm Fraser. And Malcolm Fraser says, I'm here for you to make me Prime Minister. And John Kerr's like... What are you talking about? It's like one o'clock. I haven't even dismissed Whitlam. You're too early. You're gonna blow this shit. He's gonna see your car. He's gonna pull up. He's gonna realize that you're here. He's gonna realize that I'm gonna dismiss him. He's gonna call the queen. He's gonna get me fired. And Malcolm Fraser's is like, it's all right. I'll hide inside you. In, not inside you, inside your closet. Have you got a closet for a six foot four man? Try the wrong hole. Oh, I love my vision. Am I back? <laughs> Am I back? <laughs> Eurovision. Oh, I love a live show. Don't you, Minnie? Oh, I love many live things. I well, love live stock. <laughs> just I don't love... swear, love. What? Don't say shit or fuck or bugger. That's all you got to do. Right. Uh, Welcome oh. to the show, Greta. Hello. Hello, Greta. Hi, Greta. Thank you for dressing up for the occasion. Of course. 
Now, Greta, can I ask you a question? Yeah. How do you Go learn it. your lines? Because, you know, the only line I've known at the moment is <laughs> lines at Mardi Gras. <laughs> Um, the lines for Drunk History. Yeah. Yes. Um, basically, it's like drag. You have to learn to lip sync um, pretty much. So I, I just watched a lot of um, Sasha Velour videos um, to make sure that I was lip syncing convincingly. But you just got to listen to it over and over again and make sure your mouth syncs with the mouth of the drunk comedian, basically. <laughs> just watch your mouth, basically. That's we might be able to have a lip sync yeah. battle one day, Greta. <laughs> I'd love to do one of those. That's been one of uh, one of my bucket list items. Okay, you can have it. <laughs> Listen, Greta, what's been your best part? <laughs> oh, so in that episode of Drunk History, I was working with um, Stephen Curry playing Gough Whitlam, and he's just really nice guy, just totally down to earth. And I mean, everybody says that's a massive cliche, but you know, he re he really is. He's one of those um, just everyday blokes that happens to be a really, really good, accomplished actor. <laughs> Yeah, good work. Do you know what? I want to know what's the worst part of it because, you know, I'm that kind of girl. <laughs> okay. I don't know how drag queens do it. Wigs. Oh. Wigs. Oh, you come on. That's you, Minnie. Well, it's funny that you say uh, that. It's it's pissing me off right now if you really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with me is I've got this really, like, large, it's abnormally large forehead. It's like a lot of real estate there. So. Ah, uh, doll, <laughs> do you see who you're looking at? <laughs> well, I can't tell. Your hairline looks very beautiful, glamorous. I just... I've always I, loved I you, Greta. Hey, Gre I said I've always loved you, Greta. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Greta, can I ask you, you, what did you have to do to get into character when you were doing Mal for Malcolm Fraser? What was that like? Okay. Um, well, I I know that um, you, the Queen, do a bit of tucking, don't you? Oh, you're all the time. <laughs> Tucking's my middle all name. Well, again, I, I just basically have to do the reverse of that. So it's stuffing. you got to stuff. Well, I found I had to stuff anyway. So I got a big ball of socks and uh, shoved it down my pants, and that helped me get the, the walk, the swagger, the, you know, the 1970s male um, gait, I guess you could say. <laughs> you know, one, has there been any other times you've cross-dressed and enjoyed it? Oh, look. I like I like playing the characters, but apart from the wig glue and and the other things that go along with it, like another time I did it for a show we did in, uh, well, I did with my sketch group Skitbox in 2015. Mm. Um, we did a show called Wham Bam Thank You Man, which is like an all female <laughs> sketch show, and we did a show called a uh, sketch called Boys Will Be Boys. And I had to play Sheldon Cooper, like a type Sheldon character from Big Bang Theory, and they gave me stubble, <laughs> and there's a thing called a, a flocking gun, so they just put glue on your lower half of your face and just fire little pointy stabby bits of chopped up hair and it's wow. the itchiest most uncomfortable worst thing ever sounds so like a turn really on to it. me um and Greta, obviously look we're in lockdown right now what's the one thing what's your self-isolation item what's the one thing you can't do without now that you just can't do anything oh okay okay i'll show you yeah what's there oh, oh, what is that oh, oh, oh. keep your clothes yes. on yes Nintendo 64 controller that's USB, so you Whoops. can plug it into your oh laptop <laughs> and play all your old games. Oh, well, that's yeah. proper old school. We love that. I used to love playing those games. Okay, that's the one item that you need. Absolutely, that gets you through. Yep, that's the one. All you need is a laptop and one of these, and you can play all your old nostalgic games from when we were kids on the, in oh, yeah. on the Nintendo 64. So it was, that's, that's my item. Greta, <laughs> thank you so much. That's an item I would like as well. Oh, my gosh. So good to have you on the show tonight. Thank you very much for coming through. It's so good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Love Bye. you, Greta. Love her. Love her. Um, right. Um, right, Minnie, we've got uh, a special guest well, now. Well, you know, I'm so excited to have my next guest, so you need to move. Yes. Get out, get out. Pam, can you clean the seat? Clean the seat, Pam. Clean it up. That's it. That's it. Put the gloves there. Good. That's it. See, we love cleanliness here. Look, look. See that? See that? Cleaning. That's called cleaning. You know, all those people like that, that's what I call cleaning the venue. Yes? Take note. All those people, you know I'm talking to you. Can we please welcome to our very clean stage the wonderful Richard Reed? Yes, you! Hello! 
for your magnificent beauty, my dear. You and the world. It is so true. In fact, after the show's over, I'll bow in private, if you know what I mean. Oh! Well, I will. No, I will. Well, can I do I've always loved you from a distance, and it looks like it's still from a distance. It is a distance. It is, you know, I used to work with Richard Wilkins. You know, his name's Richard. And, yes. you know, he's notoriously called Big Dick. Oh. So that means I guess I have to go by Little Dick. But not anymore. Mm. You can call me Big Dick. Well, I'll probably find out later from what you just said. I hope you do. I hope you do. Well, I got to tell you, Minnie. Yes, go. From here to Hollywood, it has been dead, dead, dead out there on the streets. I got to tell you, the only thing moving are the Kardashians and cockroaches, but I'm here to talk about the Kardashians. Please do. <laughs> Love the Kardashians. <laughs> well, I got to say, okay, it has been more than a decade. You know, we've seen... Uh, uh, weddings, we've seen babies, we've seen divorces, we've seen Kanye, we've even seen the first sex change, right? With uh, Well, you know, yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I won't go there. No, I don't go there. I just don't want her to drive anymore. That's my only wish with her. Right. <laughs> mm. Well, it's been 13 seasons of Kourtney Kardashian standing in uh, little sister Kim Kardashian's big ass shadow. Well, on this week's episode, Courtney has finally had enough, and she gave Kim a what for. Take a look. Who doesn't love a bitch fight? You! You're literally. I will literally with you. you up. Come here. You guys, my daughter's sleeping. Don't ever come at me like you that. Don't, I stop. swear to God, I'll punch you in your face. Don't fing use it. Billy and Billy. 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 Stop. Okay, stop, you two. Okay, stop. <laughs> Wait, no, no. Come. The crew is ever. Then shut the don't ever you do too. it or shut the f up. Don't okay. ever f***ing dig your nails in me like that. How stop the old f you? Shut the f you. Up. I'm sleeping. Guys, stop. How old am I? Stop. How old? Wow. I am telling you, that was a Kardashian car crash of a cat bite. And I'm telling you, the numbers are through the roof. Now, the, okay, here's, the, here's yes, the thing, here's the yes. thing. You know, Courtney, God love her, she finally had enough. You know, she's like, this is bullshit. It's a reality show. We all know it's fake. Well, Kim, of course, didn't take her long to throw her sister under the truck, go on national TV, and here's what she had to say, defending herself. Go ahead. Oh, I love listen. when Kim does this. I feel like it's been a, a lot of built-up resentment from Courtney, or just feeling like she doesn't really want to film anymore. And so... Um, She's not the type of person to make a decision and say, okay, guys, I'm not going to film, but she would come to work with an attitude every day and kind of take it out on everyone from the crew to us and, and wouldn't really make that decision. So we would kind of like just keep on pushing her and to figure out why she was so unhappy. And then, I don't think I've ever seen like a physical fight on your show before, have I? haven't no no it's not really what we do i mean when my mom saw that a clip of that she cried <laughs> oh my god everyone's like oh that's not your kind of show oh kim she's like no and my mother cried <laughs> <laughs> cried cash that's what she's crying Cash poor? I yeah, don't think so. I, I, you know, I, I, I got to say, Kim can work any kind of angle to her advantage. Isn't that true? Absolutely. Do you know what? I've never seen someone have a butt like that and actually try to get someone out of prison. It's quite amazing. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, there's Mother Teresa, you know, Princess Diana, and Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. Right down there. I have to, I actually have to give it to her because, you know, I loved it when she did the, um, what is it, the menu log commercials. It actually made her seem like she was actually a human, and I yeah. love that about her. And we know she doesn't eat solid food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's Neither do true. I, oh. not since 1972. <laughs> well, I've got to tell you, last week, you know, I, I was in the audience from afar loving you, but I was so worked up, it was like all I needed was a good bedtime story and there was nothing out there but what this we got? week our very own Dolly Parton has taken to the interweb with her own little brand of bedtime stories take a listen hello I'm Dolly Parton the book lady from the imagination library and I'm going to be reading a very special book today this is called the little engine that could this book is so special, it's celebrating its 90th anniversary. 90th anniversary? 
anniversary. Were you around when that book came out? Oh, was that way, way before that? Oh, mm. good for yeah, you. Yeah, you know, I'm much older than Dolly Parton. Wow. Well, I you look came, at the were you on the Ark? Yeah, with basically. Noah? Yeah, there was two of me. And how many uh, were you on there as well? I seem to remember you. Ah, uh, you know what? <laughs> I was way down with you know the other sailors. You know, I was I was rowing. I mm. was rowing. But the thing is, you know, Dolly, you know, she came on for you know the kids and the family folk. But wouldn't you know? Our good buddy Samuel L. Jackson, he wasn't about to be outdone by Dolly. He's got a book of another kind. Take a listen. Sure, you can still see your friends. Use the mother app on your phone. But unless you just ran out of groceries, please stay the f at home. Thank you for doing your part to flatten the curve. Because that is steep and now that you're home please feel free to go the f to sleep the end. richard thank you so much for coming i have one thing to say to you yes. though stay the fuck at home oh, i'm out of here oh my god i'm gonna go the fuck to sleep <laughs> thank you ladies and gentlemen please give it up for richard reed Pam. Pam, clean the seats, clean the seats, please, Pam. Steve's got to come back. How you going, Dom? Loving you. Sick tonight. You look so cute up there. Are you on your knees? Um, no. I'm actually on top of ten phone books. Oh, I didn't know they still had phone books. <laughs> That's how old Stonewall is. They still have fucking phone books. Welcome back, Steve. Oh, thank you. I'm glad they cleaned that seat. Coronavirus or otherwise. Sorry, Richard, this wasn't too short. Do you know what I mean? Right, um, I love that Kim Kardashian story. That's hilarious. Okay, uh, there's actually an amazing comedian in London uh, called Steph Todd who does the best celebrity impressions. You're going to love this. And she did one of Kim this week. Have a look. I feel like there's so many things that you can do in some quarantine, organizing my lip kits. This one is called Whisper because I really like to whisper. At least I have a great excuse to not have to see Kim. Oh my god, Courtney, that is so ridiculous. So good, so good. Okay, now we all need a helping hand in this time of need. It's time now. Just the tip. <laughs> oh dear. What okay. is the tip? The, well, we're about to find out. The thing about isolation is it allows people to not only indulge in their passions, but to teach the world how to do them too. For example, have a look at Joe Trishini, for example. Hi, hope you're okay. Um, today it's musical theatre jazz with a hint of soft shoe. Now, it, this is what I trained in and it's very fast, but don't worry because I'm going to slow it down for you. Have a good time. Okay, so starting second at the back. And push, 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 push. Who's at the door? Jeremy Irons. Clickety click. Keish Lorraine into a hinge jazz fourth. Clickety click, clickety click. Make a tiny window into the tap section. So step or change. Think of a horse, think of a horse. Dick Van Dyke, Dick Van Dyke. Nearly fall over, make it work. Fillet, mignon. Fillet, mignon. Through the curtains, Matthew Kelly, starting her eyes, up the leg, look at your foot, to the right, whack, wrong, Thor. <laughs> Looks cold out there. Right, uh, Sherilyn Barnes will be uh, joining us a little bit later and has been letting her creative juices flow. Have a look. Hi, Sherilyn Barnes here and I just want to say to you, Stay the fuck inside. You bastards are going to get us all killed if you keep going outside. You know, this whole coronavirus thing has made me start get back into writing my poems. So I want to say one what I writ recently. Please do your best to stay inside. Don't go out there, not even for a bike ride. 
because if you go out there spreading germs and acting dumb, the next person what drops dead might be your mum. Now, your mum's already dead, you say. All right, well, what if it was your dad what passed away? Because it doesn't matter if it's Trump, Greta or Miley Cyrus. You've got no idea if you're carrying a coronavirus. So, yeah, something for you to think about. Who'd <laughs> ever thought that Miley Cyrus would rhyme with coronavirus? <laughs> Who would have thought? Are the two put together? I don't know. Everyone is uh, getting in on the action. So we thought we'd reach out to some of the celebs out there to give us some home-style isolation survival tips. Joining us tonight is comedy queen of the bush. It's Nikki Osborne. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. Yay! Oh, she's G'day, got a drink. Australia. <laughs> G'day, Bush Barbie in tonight, but um, you know, everyone has to stay at home, and because she doesn't have a fucking home, she's vanished off that bush. But um, oh, is she yeah, in the entertainment to, industry? Welcome to my kitchen. Do you like a frock? A little frock, up? Nice uh, frock. You've been going through my wardrobe, Dale. <laughs> I have. I thought, you know what, given this show is um, directed at a certain demographic, I'll try and look as Kylie Minogue as Pops. <laughs> oh, is that Kylie Minogue, is it? Kylie. Oh, I okay. thought it was Carrie Ann Kennelly. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? Looks like you've got a full bar there. What is that you're drinking? Well, I'm on the scotch right now. <laughs> and then I've got all sorts of cocktails being made because, um, you know, I've been homeschooling the kids. Oh, God. And I thought I might as well school them in something that will be useful later in life. Because let's face it, kids always end up being bartenders five years. Come in here, Will. You're going to be, be okay. the best I, mum of Australia. You are <laughs> best mum in Australia. Here, Mother here's of the year. Will. Here's my um, little trainee. Let's do a pop quiz. All right, Will. Um, if I've got one part limoncello, no, one part <laughs> soda water, two parts limoncello, three parts prosecco, what do we have? Limoncello spirits. What if I have one gin, vodka, Orange juice and Galliana. What do I have? Oh, I'm against the wall. Brilliant. See, fucking good at this. Oh, you should be and so then, proud. What else? What's another one? What is the alcohol blood limit? 0.05. Yes. Oh. Are there any RBTs out at the moment? No. <laughs> and why not? Because I'm asking grandmas. Exactly. <laughs> well. Wow. Your oh. kids are so well informed. Amazing. They're going to do well. They're going to do well. You're well doing done. so well. And then I've got the other one, the younger one. Oh, on there's the more. He, yeah, I've got another one. He's on street. He, I've got him doing my tax. Oh, He's brilliant. Going, All right, off you go. Go help your brother. You've got oh. the perfect gay family, you do. Yeah. I do. Even my husband is a little bit. I always, when I first met him, I don't know if it's because I'm from Queensland or because he was from Britain, but I thought he was gay. Oh, and everyone from Britain is gay. I know, and I realised he was just British, but yeah, he did come across as very gay. Listen, yeah. Nikki, tell us, what, what's, what's your isolation support item? What's the one thing you can't do without during this hard time? Uh, scotch. <laughs> and, um, and dodgeball. So Ooh. because oh. we've got the kids on us and we're working from home as much as we can, yeah. and, you know, we all want to kill each other, so instead we'll <laughs> take it out to the trampoline and um, just pelt the balls at the kids, which is great for us. <laughs> and it also teaches them how to quickly put 1.5 metres between things flying in the face. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Love it. I do that every Saturday night when I used to be able to have, you know, the uh-uh. <laughs> oh, wow. Nikki, do you know what? You should be the proudest mummer out there. Look at her kids. They're going to do so well. Nikki, thank you so much. Have a scotch for me, love, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. I will. Thanks. See ya, right, thank you. Uh, love oh your dress, gosh. too. Send it back. I love that. God, that's a full stock bar. I'm, I'm loving that kitchen. Okay. Um, now, I think we should check in on Dom. Dom is our DJ this evening. Dom, how you doing, man? I'm great. How are you guys? Oh, we're good. Isn't he a little cutie patootie? <laughs> yeah. Now, Dom, I do believe you've been, not only have you been entertaining everyone, he's been amazing on the internet, <laughs> entertaining everyone on the Facebook, making them able to dance on their homes. Yes. Have you had a great time doing I that? I have. Dancing <laughs> around like an idiot for two weeks has been the amazing, most amazing way to get through your self-quarantine. You, did you ever think that would become your career? No. <laughs> yeah, but well, you it, it kind of is my career, just not from my lounge room. 
But that's what I mean. Isn't that just amazing? You don't need to leave your house no, to have a fabulous career. Yes, thank you. And I do believe you've written and uh, remixed an amazing song. Can you tell me about that? Yes. Earlier this year, I released my second single with Luke Anthony. My second one, yes, that's correct, on Queen House Records. Um, and it's a cover of Savage Gardens to the Moon and Back. I Brilliant. love this song. Can we hear love a little it. bit? Sure thing. Let's check it out. Because I love it. Yeah. We're not at the moment. Don't look like you're having too much fun, ladies and gentlemen. People don't like it. Let me just have a Coke. I just need to have a Coke. Because I don't want to be seen to be having too much fun. Do you know what? The funny thing is, I've never been in this place sober. That's what's so funny. Oh, have, have you? you? Never. Oh. Here we are doing a show from it, sober. Okay, listen. Now, as much as we're in lockdown and life is pretty shitty for a lot of people, uh, we want to remind you all to stay connected and to support each other. And with that in mind, we want to shine a very bright light on Trans Visibility Day, which happened this week. Uh... In just a moment, many will be chatting with trans DJ, makeup artist, showgirl, and winner of Miss Stonewall 2020, the beautiful Sky Payers. But first, queer artist Siki Daha has released his powerful new music video this week, which raises awareness about employing and protecting the trans community. Have a look. <laughs> That was just fantastic. I love that. And ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited about this tonight because this is a part of Real Stonewall. We are about to have the winner of Miss Stonewall 2020 and it was won by a trans woman. And her name is Skye. Give it up for Skye. <laughs> Now, Sky, I am so glad we have social distancing because you make me look like a man. <laughs> yes, put it on, put it on. You're used to having things over your face. I know. Yeah, go, give it a go, Sky, give it a go. That's it. There we go. Sky loves it. Isn't she the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Yeah, they did. You knew that, you sneaky little witch you are. Now, Sky, I have to ask you, I am so proud of you because dra drag queens normally enter drag comps, but not many trans women do. And it's normally won by a drag queen. And I was so proud of you and your performance oh, and that you. you won. It actually was incredible. How did it make you feel being a trans woman? Um, it made me feel really grateful and I felt really happy that I was accepted into the drag world and into a space where normally I don't see trans women um, winning those type of comps mm. like RuPaul's Drag Race and everything. So I was really honoured and speechless and really happy and mm. I felt a sense of love and acceptance from um, the queer community, especially something like Stone was such an iconic club. So to be um, representing them feels amazing and uh, like a huge honour. So. And I'm really, I do, I I'm do really have a, another grateful. question for you. Not only is Sky trans, you also have a trans sister. What is that like? Yes, I do. She's actually 13 years younger than me. And um, she actually, like, I was cross dressing and doing drag before I I don't know what cross dressing is, Sky. <laughs> I've never heard about it. Never heard about it. And she actually <laughs> wanted to transition before me because she had gone online and seen. Mm -hmm you know from youtube saying um other young people transition and whereas i didn't i i don't know i think because we grew up in a, 
a different age. It wasn't something that was on the media or on TV. So I didn't know how to go about becoming a woman. I didn't know mm -hmm. I could actually get, get treatment and do hormones and everything to become a woman. Mm -hmm. So she actually informed me and she told me her decision that she was going to transition and she had um, an appointment with an endocrinologist and everything. And then I, I jumped on board as well and I was like, oh, this is for me also. Like, so she helped me as much as I was there for her. So. But you know what? I just find you so brave. And, it's, and I love that there is someone representing. And representation is so, so important. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I am so Thank proud you. of you. And I just love you. She not oh, only I is love you, Minnie. <laughs> she not only is beautiful aesthetically, she also has a beautiful soul. You oh, really, really thank do. You. Thank Ladies you for and gentlemen, me. give it up for Sky. Oh, thank you for She'll be shooting for the stars when we get out of fucking isolation. <laughs> Steve, you coming back? Pam, you got to clean the seat. She keeps cleaning. She keeps, keeps cleaning. Pam's cleaning. She's Pam. Pam's cleaning. Yeah, that's it. Oh, my God. I was doing that when I was watching Tim and Rod's videos last week. Oh, I was. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, and then I was doing that also after I watched the videos. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Pam Damick. Pam. I've never seen it clean so much. Oh. Oh, that wasn't that lovely. Sky, what, yeah. what a great girl. So good to see her on. Uh, she really is amazing. Look, it's never been uh, more important to stay connected to our community. So to all our trans friends out there, we see you and we hear you and we support you. Uh, now, it's time to see what one of our national treasures is up to this Saturday night. Uh, now, she's a gay icon. She has men falling at her feet. It is, of course, Sherilyn Barnes. <laughs> Woo, I can't wait. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. She's just coming oh, on. Oh, we're just trying She's to get... She's just coming on. She doesn't know how to work the internet. She can't work the interweb. The, oh, it's the interweb, The interweb. It? It's just difficult. When what? was the first time you ever were on the internet? Was do when you were on the gay dial? Do you remember it? ICQ? Do you remember all that? Oh, she's no. here. Sorry. Oh, she's, oh, oh, sorry. she's here. Hello, girl. Hi, love. Hello. Hello. Can you tell me your tricks about being a gay icon? Oh, uh, you just got to do and say everything what they want and then they'll <laughs> give you all them pink dollars. Trust me. That's where I'm going wrong. <laughs> yeah. Just do what they want. Yeah. Just be a pleaser. That's the easy way out, isn't it? And, yeah. and you are a yeah. big social media star. I just, I wish I could. You need to teach me lots of things you do. You've just got to um, go on TikTok, do stupid dances, Say, again, say what they want to hear. Don't even worry about what you want. Just do what stupid, uh, young people want you to do. Listen, can I ask you, where did your poems come from? Because you wrote a great poem. That was really funny. Oh, thank you. Um, it was. I always used to write poems, but ever since I started becoming a genius, I just sort of <laughs> forgot about it. But I used to always write some good ones, just little things. I wrote one what was, um, it says, I wish in about an hour I had all the dollars and all the power. So that was, um, you know, a little glimmer of my genius. But it's, yeah, it's evolved sort of thing. Oh, you point. are like better than Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What are you, what, are those ears you're wearing? Because I love them. They look cute. Pussy ears. Oh, because they... I'm obsessed with cats. Oh, I love I'm cats. the fucking tiger queen. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Tiger Brilliant. Queens. Can you tell me, do you have any special words for me tonight? Like, can you talk about it? Oh, I've got one for you. Oh, yeah. which one? Because everything what I've done to end homophobia, yes. all the gay guys have let me be allowed to say faggot. So <laughs> I've been saying it all over Twitter, uh, all over my Facebook site. Yeah. You're the gay guys men love, love you. It. Men love you. You're allowed to do that. I prefer That's puffy. Right. Um, listen, what's what's your self-isolation item? What's the one thing that you have to have with you to get through this pandemic we're going through? Oh, God, you know what? The lock on this fucking bedroom door to keep that bitch of a daughter of mine out. <laughs> I love it. What's your daughter's name? Yeah. I can't remember. Desiree. She's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I must be related to her, too, because I'm a fucking idiot, too. <laughs> Oh, all right, yeah. Well, you must be friends with her because her, her friends are fucking idiots as well. Oh, yeah, we're friends on the Facebook, we are. Yeah, yeah. 
Sherilyn, can I ask you, I don't mean to be rude here, but have you ever hoarded anything? Because look, people are going to the shops and just stealing toilet paper. Have you got, have you, have you hoarded anything? Well, I was hoarding these bastards, the <laughs> pussies, but um, there's nothing to hoard. I would be hoarding toilet paper like this now tomorrow, but every fucking time I go, it's all gone, isn't it? <laughs> I, I hope you don't mind me asking, but do you masturbate? Come on, get real. Of course I do. <laughs> That's why you're always so happy. Yeah. Moist. 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 <laughs> She's moist, many. Moist as moist. well. Um, yeah. So listen, can I ask you, what, what's, the, what's the thing you're looking forward to? When all this is over, right, and we can actually go outside and, you know, hug someone and go for dinner, what are you looking forward to doing when this is finally over? Um, Self-isolation, but yeah. without my family. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. Is I'm really any... looking forward to that. Because you are such a gay icon. Is there any more words you have for us gays? <laughs> um, so there's faggot. There is, um, they love saying G. Can you get G? They <laughs> say that one as well. Yeah, they like the yeah. E as well. There's other letters as well, yes. What's your favourite yeah. letter? My favourite? Yeah, your favourite. Um, G. Chief, <laughs> good on you. Oh, Sherilyn, thank you so much for coming on. You are a fabulous, fabulous guest, and we loved having you. You take care of yourself. All right, pussy kiss. Oh, oh pussy kiss, oh. you look so sexy. You do oh, so yeah. sexy. Yeah. I love her poems. They were great. Okay, uh, look, one of the best things about being stuck at home when you're a talented musician with a load of celebrity mates at your disposal is to get them together on Skype, sing a classic feel-good song, post it to the world, and bring people endless joy, which is exactly what Josh Foreman and his Aussie Pop Orchestra did brilliantly earlier this week. Have a look.
want to get a lighter out and do that and play my violin. Right, uh, so many glorious people there. And of course, Rhonda Birchmore was there, who we had on the show last week, was in there, which is brilliant. Uh, we've got more people coming up on the series. Well. Trevor Ashley and uh, Sylvia Palladino is coming up as well, which is great. Oh, isn't it fabulous? I can't wait to have Sylvia on because she's going to be singing Christmas carols. Was it Christmas already? Well, it is for it Sylvia. Could be. It's always Christmas for Sylvia. Oh, it's been in lockdown. I don't even know what day it is. Easter's but coming up. God knows what be Christmas before we know it. She is the queen of the carol. That's something you don't know about. No, her. I don't. I'm Every Christmas, no matter what, yes. Sylvia is there, there singing us Christmas carols, sending us to sleep. All but right. those vocals <laughs> are magnificent. Woo, woo. Right, so everyone, put your Christmas tree up. Now, she's an award-winning actress and entertainer. She's starred in countless iconic theatre shows like Les Mis and Mamma Mia, Sweet Charity and Dirty Blonde. Here she is. How are you? Laura Mulcahy. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> hi, Lara. Lara, sorry, <laughs> I said Laura. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll edit that bit out. Oh my okay. God, look at Lara's pussy. <laughs> my mother is going to think I'm straight saying that. <laughs> you don't get that every day, do you? Though? Here is Sabrina. She say hello to everybody. Hi, so Sabrina. Hi, she and is one of sexy She's pussy. Get <laughs> Lara, how, how, are you, I am, how are you going in, in there in self-isolation? What are you doing apart from touching your pussy? <laughs> Dallin, Dallin, this is the first time in two weeks I have taken off the tracksuit pants. I've got a bit, a bit, a bit of face on. I've been painting the roots. The roots in my hair were so grey I was turning into Robin Nevin. So here's my little special kit. It's a bit like eyeshadow but you put it on the hair. And it's called, um, I think it's called um, Root Blur. Root, root Blur. Root Blur. Is that what happens? I'm going I'm to lead you in here. Is that what happens when you go, when you have menopause? ba -dum ching <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, yes, everything. Everything blurs when you have menopause. <laughs> I do believe you were yes, about to do that musical. Yeah. Menopause. Yes. We was, Snow White. It's we were supposed to, supposed to start rehearsals after Easter and, of course, that's all gone. Oh. The whole industry so, um, is just gone. I'm now an unemployed. Oh, and, uh, have you taken up smoking? Sorry? Have you taken up smoking? Yeah. Just fake smoking, sweetie. Just fake smoking. Do you know what is one of my <laughs> favourite performances of yours is? Is being in the Moulin Rouge. Oh, yeah. You were amazing oh. in that movie. I love doing that movie. I played Mom Fromage, which um, translates to Madame Cheese. Brilliant. I hope she was a brie. That's all I've been saying. I hope she was a triple brie if she was a cheese. <laughs> and um, look, I've got a special. Oh, I've got cat fur in my. Pussy fur. Cat fur. Oh, no wonder um, I don't eat pussy. <laughs> exactly. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. No, look, I've got another special guest. My lovely, our dresser, Subi, when we were doing Mum and Mia, she <laughs> made me. The mom from my doll. Oh, I love that. Watch out for Rhonda. I She's going to nick that. Rhonda loves the dolls. I know. Birchmo was showing up all those 300 or so Barbies last week. I thought, well, I've got one, but she's a bit fatter than a Barbie because, you know, it had to match me, so obviously. Sweet. <laughs> I'm like a Barbie. I'm like a Barbie too with something a bit fatter as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Lara, can I ask you, obviously in isolation at the moment, no one can do anything. What's your isolation support item? What's the one thing you can't do without at the moment? Well, besides my cat, Sabrina, like yeah. she's, I'm driving her nuts. She's like, will you please leave the house? I'm just sick of you. Um, oh, do you know, today, I was so bored today that I dressed up as Carol Baskin from Tiger King. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> you are a bloody <laughs> legend. Oh, my God. If you go to my Instagram, Lara underscore Mulcahy, there is much delight for you today to see me can with you my do flowers on my head. Can you please do an impersonation? Yeah. Please do an impersonation right now. Please. Can you do it? Uh, hello, cats and kittens, and welcome to the Big Cat Rescue. I'm Carol Baskin. I'm really pleased that Joe, uh, Exotic Joe, is in jail now, and, you know, I am no longer in fear of my life. Anyway, you know I've done a video for tomorrow. That's how bored I am. That's I would cast you in the I'm musical. Yeah. You've got the job. You're You've in the it. musical. You've got it. <laughs> I have to fight off Kate McKinnon. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Lara, thank you so much for coming on the show. And, uh, yeah, sorry I got your name wrong. Got it wrong. Yeah, yeah. well, I don't know. Mm. 
And you know what? One, one thing before you go, I just have to say how much I adore watching you and Rhonda perform together. I love your friendship, your sisterhood. It is beautiful to watch. It's amazing. Love it. My bestie, we've been doing a show together called Partners in Crime and hopefully when all this is over, we'll be back on stage again together. We can't wait. Absolutely. Love you, Lara. Thank Say you, Lara. Lara. No, no, Lara. Love you, Lara. <laughs> Bye. Stop playing with your pussy, Lara. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, moving on. So, now, as much as we really like to receive, we also like to give. <laughs> Do you? I know, I know it's rare in this town, I tell you. So I'd like to give it to 10 of you. Oh, Doubt it. Oh, goodness gracious, you dirty bastards. Okay, I'm talking about giving you, Lucky Lot at Home, the chance to claim one of 10 Jimmy Bring vouchers worth $100 each. That's a lot Yay! of money. Yes. He's quite cute, isn't he, Jimmy? Right, all you have to do is head back to stonewall.live after the show, enter your details, and 10 lucky winners will be sent their voucher in time to stock up and enjoy a few drinks on us and Jimmy during next week's show. Okay, she's an Australian pop icon with classic hits such as Read My Lips and Sexy Is The Word. She's always hitting our TV screens, whether it's on dramas, soaps, or chats. And she's with us tonight. We're going to her live in her home. It's Melissa Couch. Yes! Oh my God, you are still so beautiful. I have to oh. tell you one thing before we start. You are the only woman I've ever had on my wall as a kid. Oh, you're going to make me cry. That's so beautiful. What not I even to... Kylie. Not even Kylie. Wow. Wow. I feel so special now. I can't tell you. <laughs> What's that? Is there a cubby house behind you? What's one going on there? It looks like a little... Okay. So because the kids are now, um, we're at um, home schooling, oh. um, I'm, they've kidnapped my computer and I'm actually in the kids' toy room. <laughs> and they've got like a little teepee, teepee there. Yeah. It's got like a little rainbow and yeah, all the toys behind me. It's so beautiful. Here I am with my diamantes on and my fabulous dress. Do you have gorgeous. stilettos on as well? <laughs> Girl, are you ready? Yeah, go on. Don't show up. Go. Don't show up. But I do have... Oh! <laughs> Brilliant. I actually thought you were going to have stilettos on. I really did. <laughs> I almost did, but I've had two bottles of champagne with my husband this afternoon and I was looking at the stairs going down into the fire and I went, no, thumbs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now, listen, we're at the Stonewall, obviously. You've performed here, haven't you? You've been here. I have. I've danced on the bar. Oh, who hasn't? Several times. What have Not you done? sober, but I, I've done some great gigs there. I love the, I love the audience at um, Stonewall. I love... Stonewall itself, I'm always um, looked after so well. It's such a great night. One of your biggest hit singles, Glamorous Life, you, I, did you, I think you actually filmed it here at the hotel, didn't you, with three of the dancers, didn't you? Yeah. We did do some of it, yeah, we did do some of it there. I love Glamorous Life too. It's one of my favourite songs to sing. What is your favourite song? I, I will tell you mine in a second. Oh, look, I don't, there's just something about Glamorous Life. Actually, um, my dear, dear friend, who I'm sure you know, Penny Clifford. Oh, give it up for Penny Clifford! She said, you've got to do Glamorous Life. I didn't even know what it was. I hadn't even heard of it. And then I listened to it and I went, oh, yeah, yeah. But then my producer, like, did something amazing with it and then I got it remixed and I was like, and now it's my favourite. It's my favourite track to perform by far. Mine is love, not war. Love is what I want <laughs> oh, to for. Make out, make out, skin, skin to skin. skin. Love, yeah. not war. Yeah. yeah, I know. I oh, know. I love that. I know it. But the dancers in the black and the white, weren't they? And I was in something hideously purple and oh, whatever. Long time ago. Listen, once this is all over and we can finally leave the house and buy toilet paper, oh, what, are, what are you going to do? What, what's coming up? Party, baby. Yeah. Party. I've been on the phone all afternoon with my friends. They've, like, had cocktails in their hand and been blending up cocktails. I've been walking around with the champagne <laughs> and the slippers on. and We've been gas bagging all afternoon. And I think that's the thing. I, I just think we, we miss our friends. And it's not about getting drunk and, you know, staying out till 6 in the morning. Are it's just sure that social that? contact, isn't it? It's, <laughs> no, it is. Do you love one? I miss that. What was that? Are you sure you haven't been? been. Yeah. I love you. It's not about getting drunk, but you just said you had two no, bottles of wine. Yeah, it's not about getting drunk. No. 
No, but you know what I mean. Like yeah, I, totally. I, I miss, I miss the social contact. You know, with the people that you love. You know, yeah, and okay. family as well. My mother won't come near us. Oh. She's terrified, though. She's in her apartment, and I have to go and visit her, and she's in the balcony, and we're doing these ones. Hi, Mum! It's like a beta, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. A beta, Don't cry to me. Um, all right, darling. Well, listen, thank you so much, and I hope the kids are okay. That looks like a fun room, that room, doesn't it? Oh, she's a fun girl. I love her. She's yeah. always been a good friend of the gays. She yeah, has loved the gays. Oh, I love you all. You're all so supportive, and... You've always been there for me, and I will always be there for you. Thank you so much. That's because you've given us great songs to mime to. Thanks. I'll oh. keep them coming. I, I just heard coming. That's all I heard. Yeah. Oh, I haven't I heard that for I just heard coming. That's all I heard. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's time to take a look at our top movie pick of the week. Uh, thanks to our friends at Queer Screen. <laughs> discover the best queer uh, queer films uh, you can watch right now in the sanitized comfort of your own home now tonight's choice is an incredible film called tangerine it was released in 2015 and was regarded as groundbreaking not only did they have a trans lead but the whole movie was shot on an iphone 5 have a look Incredible, very powerful, very funny. I, I, I've been shooting other movies on my iPhone 5, not one like that, though. Well, the funny thing is, do you know what? I can't believe it was shot on a phone. And I, now that I think about it, the best films and videos I've ever seen have come from people's phones. I know, just ask Kim Kardashian. You know, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't going to... Okay, right, uh, you can find Tangerine uh, uh, for free on SBS On Demand. Okay, for more information, head to queerscreen.org.au to check out the latest films, news, and become a member. Plus, get information on their next film festival. Um, okay. We've got lots of waving going on over here. Okay. Yeah, because we're, we're queers. Yes. We wave. We're right. queer. Let's get this order queue going up. Next film festival. Okay. Okay. Um, each week we want to shine a light on important issues in the community. Now, many people often feel uh, invisible, and many of us are now isolated more than ever. So it's important to know uh, there are places you can reach out to to talk to if you need to. It's now time for the Community Spotlight. Last week, we kicked things off with Chris James from GaySydneyCouncillor.org, and there was so much we didn't get to talk about. So Chris is back, thanks to the power of Skype. As we are aware, there is lots of things to talk about, especially people's mental health. Hello, Chris, and thank you for coming back on the show. Hi, nice to see you all again. Thanks for putting on a great show. I'm feeling really relaxed after listening to that What a Wonderful World song. It's, yeah, it's just, yeah, I feel really relaxed right now. It was good. Um, so, Chris, look, obviously we're having a lot of fun and it's great to have some entertainment. We're looking at great videos. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people at home and a lot of people are struggling. Um, and you know what? I think everyone watching right now can identify in one way or another that, you know, this is all affecting our mental health. And this is something that we need to really pay attention to. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, for many of us um, in the LGBTIQA plus community, our friends are our family. You know, we, uh, we really need to be keeping an eye on each other. And we need to reach out if we're struggling. Um, you know, you're reaching out. Lots of people sometimes choose not to reach out for fear of burdening their friends or their family. But you're reaching out could actually be incredibly helpful, incredibly helpful for them as well. They could have been waiting for a phone call, waiting for your phone call, wanting to help. You know, us helping other people is a way of helping keep our own mental health at the positive end of the spectrum. You know, lots of people have lost their jobs. They've lost their livelihoods. They've lost their purpose. We, these people we especially need to be checking in on. You know, they'll be worried about their finances, their living costs, their loss of their work-related identity. So please, please remember to reach out to these people. Um, I think um, I've been offering. Sorry, go yeah. on. No, I was just saying I've been offering people who've lost their job due to COVID-19 heavily reduced therapy sessions. So please reach out if you need to. You know, we're here to support each other. So yeah. Okay, and that's the website you can see there, which is great for, for Chris. And, you know, Chris, I guess what you're touching on is really important. At the moment, you know, people feel alone, and I guess it uh, can just be a text message. It doesn't have to necessarily be a call, and that can start something. Um, and I like the idea of maybe it helping yourself as well as them. You can kind of help each other. Definitely. You know, it's one of the things that helps, helps us feel like we have purpose when we're helping each other, when we're being compassionate for each other. 
you know, uh, just thinking as well, you know, another group that we need to be really keeping an eye on are people who are living alone, you know, those people who don't have a housemate, who don't have a partner living with them or family living with them. They're going to be feeling incredibly isolated at the moment. Um, you know, also some people have family who live overseas, like, like myself, and you know, people are worried about what's happening over in Europe at the moment. So, you know, we need to be checking in and asking, all right, like, how, how are we all doing with that? How are we coping? Um, and I've had a lot of a lot of people as well, some of my clients talking about how they have got some of their you know, grandparents who are in care homes and they can't see them at the moment and they're getting sick. And, you know, we need to really somehow keep in touch with our older generation who aren't as tech savvy. So, you know, something I've been thinking about is, you know, you, know, you can maybe write a letter to, you know, some of your grandparents and, you know, that really might make their day, really help them feel connected again. I think it's important to obviously at the moment realize that, you know, you're not alone because everyone within reason is experiencing this as well. And I think everyone's probably experiencing different levels uh, of anxiety and uh, mental health. Yeah, definitely. You know, we, we, we all have, um, you know, mental health. We all fluctuate on a spectrum. You know, sometimes it's really positive. Sometimes it goes really negative. And also some people have an actual diagnosed mental illness, which is, in even more difficult to, to learn to live with and cope with. You know, so we need to be doing things that help keep our mental health at the positive end of the spectrum. And some of those things that help do that are having a connection to others, um, having a purpose, um, keeping mentally and physically stimulated. These things are really, really essential. I think it's important um, yeah, to, to definitely look after yourself as well as try and look after other people, which is important as well. Um, Chris, yeah. thank you so much for joining us again. It's really great to chat to you. Um, it's really important. So thank you so, so much. And uh, as you just said, you can get more information at gaysydneycouncillor.org. Uh, and of course, we're going to be donating 10% of tonight's donations to the incredible mental health charity, 2010.org.au. Uh, so listen, guys, remember, uh, look out for each other, keep checking in on your friends, and stay connected. Um, okay, it's almost the end of the show already. Right, Minnie, you go off, fix your tuck, and I'll, and I'll thank everyone and fill in time until you're back and ready. Okay, I've off she goes. I've been off for years, There Joel, she goes. I've been off for years. <laughs> she goes. I love your dress. I'm really quite jealous. Don't Get think your eyes me. off it, you faggot. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much uh, for watching. It really does work, mean the world to us. And thank you to the Stonewall. And a huge thanks to all our amazing guests. Thanks to our sexy barman, Ivan, and Pandemic for keeping us clean. Uh, and also a huge thank you to our in-house DJ, uh, the fabulous Dom D'Souza. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back next Saturday at 8 p.m. with more amazing guests, including Trevor Ashley. Live in the studio, we'll be putting our noses into Anthony Kalia and husband Tim Campbell's Melbourne home. And we'll also be singing with one of the best voices in Australia, Cosima DeVito, but Cosima that... DeVito. Cosima. Cosima DeVito. Listen, you just, just tuck your tits and get ready for your show. Right, but that's not all because the flights might be grounded, but before we'll be taking Stonewall around the world. Stonewall. Stonewall. I said Stonewall. 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 We're heading to Bali to see some cheeky magic tricks by the hunky bachelor god Apollo. A quick dash to New York to chat with pop superstar Bright Light, Bright Light and premiere his brand new music video and a jump across the pond to the UK. We'll be chatting to Ab Fab star Harriet Thorpe. Plus, uh, we're going to li going live to LA with queer artist BP Major where you may spot a famous Minogue. Okay, she's hopefully tucked and she's got a big mouth and she's ready to finish off the only way she knows how. It's Minnie's happy ending! <laughs> Before there was RuPaul's Drag Race, Sydney had their own drag stars, and I'm going to sing about them. Hit it! Times have changed, and we've often rewound the clock. Since Carlotta removed her sock, famous titty shows in the crowd. To remove your sock, you just tuck it right up your slot. And now Carlotta, she paved the way. In olden days, a bloke in stockings was looked on as something shocking. But now God knows anything goes. Good drag queens range, we loved Mon Kelly, Simone and Monique went north. To the Gold Coast, where old drags go. 
We had Robin Lee at the Albury and Tallulah B, Amelia and Trudy, Polly Rose 3D, Fitzy and Chelsea, Legs and Maud Boat. Cindy's life was not vanilla. She made the big screen Priscilla and Portia too. But who the fuck knew? The 90s came a wave of madness when Essa Margadonna let strike a pose. Anything goes. Penetration is quite fearless. Maxi and Taurus Beard, the clubs have closed. Cause we can't go. We've got Candy B, we've got Vanity, we got Courtney and Ashley. Charisma V, Dakota and there's me. That's how it goes. The younger drag queens all look fishy in hairlines and heels and swimsuits. No stockings though, and they're ingrown show. Just one pair of shears, girls. Just one pair of shears. You know what it's time for? Dance break! Oh, 